national trailblazers in the field. This award recognizes individuals for outstanding contributions to the field of educational degrees and leadership through service and scholarship. As past head of the Educational Administration and Policy Department, part of the UGA Alumni Association, and as other dog and the Lockwood recipient, it is with great pleasure I present to Dr. Michael Rotten the 2020 Johnny T. Cox Award from the University of Georgia Department of Lifelong Education, Administration, and Policy. Congratulations, I'm so proud of you. So the next item on the agenda board is item number six, and this is a school governance team update. This all has Assistant Superintendent Sarah Reagan. Please come to the podium and share an update with us on the five Bennett County School Governance teams that are close to our heart. Ms. Reagan, good evening. Thank you. Good evening. And tonight I would like to update you about the membership on the city school governance team. Our five schools. Uh, recently, each school held elections for parents with capital staff, or uh, they've also been in the process of appointing their community members. So, next school year, we will have three new members on each of the two. So, if you'll take a look at the uh, handout at Blue Ridge Elementary this past year, of course, the SCPs are uh, headed by the principal chair, uh, which is uh, Dr. April Hodges. Uh, Kelly Castro served this year, as well as Caprice Jones, which uh, led for Tristan Gaddis, Sarah Owensby, and Ashley Head. Next year's representatives that will be moved will be Hannah Bryant, Jessica Thomas, and Ryan Higgins as the community member. At East Fannin Elementary, uh, Matt Price, of course, is the principal chair. This year, his uh, SGP included Renee Carter, Jennifer Cochran, Brittany McClure, Grace Rhodes, Jordan Potts, and Maureen Di Francesco. Next year, the three new members will be Sarah Davis, Erin Golden, and Kayla Nazarene, in addition to the other members who have one more year to serve. At West Bend Elementary this year, of course, it had two chair people this year. Starting the year with Lucas Roof as the principal chair, and then ending the year with Allison Banner as the principal chair, Katie Robertson, Debbie Morgan, Corey Callahan, Jocelyn Miller, Nicole Potkoff, and Dr. Jill Devine. This next year, their three new members will be Shannon Shosey, Becky Hudson, and Nikki Dillard as their community member. Moving on now to Fannin County Middle School. Keith Knuckle serves as their principal chair. This year, serving at Fannin Middle School, Kelly Colsey, Natasha Anderson, Shannon York, Sherry Holloway, Sandy Ott, and Sheriff Diane Kirby. Next year, they will have three new members, which will include Lauren Payne, Stacey Lewis, and Matthew McDaniel. Finally, Fannin County High School. Principal Chair Eric Shosey served this year along with Jill Dyer, Sabrina Howard, Chan Mitchell, Lorraine Tanner, Christy Gribble, and Eddie Payne. They have two non-voting students on their SGP as well. Cooper Boyle and Anna Holloway were those students this year. Next year, 
They will have three new members, which will include Bubba Gibbs as the faculty and staff member, Dylan Miller, Dr. Dylan Miller, as their uh, parent, and finally, Cynthia Painter is their, elect, uh, their appointed community member. This year, their new student that will uh, go on to the uh, council is Catherine Young. Um, we did begin yesterday with having SGP meetings uh, in June for those that needed to have a June meeting. And so this current year's SGP would be the one serving in June. The new members will go on beginning July 1st. This month, we have uh, the high school and we also have an SGP meeting scheduled for West Bannon Elementary later in the month. Most of the schools will start their first meeting in July, at which time they will set their meetings for the year, the date and the time and location, and those will be released to you and the public so that anyone who would like to be a part of SGP as a public, um, as a part of the public, that you are always welcome to attend. So does anyone have any questions about the recent SGP election? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Regan. Our next item is number seven, central office update, and we're going to welcome technology director Heather Finley to the podium. The floor is yours, Heather. Um, Director Gluttony asked me to share this graphic with you that um, I created at the end of our last nine weeks, which was by far the most memorable of my career, for sure. That's it's certainly the most difficult. Um, but this little graphic kind of quantified what we accomplished in nine weeks. Um, and this week we've been talking about, and I know Ms. Rigdon is going to discuss this in a minute, you know, what is August going to look like for us? And it's been kind of daunting, um, and Sarah's word, getting our head wrapped around it, it's been very difficult. And when I looked at this today, I refreshed my memory, and I thought, if we can do this in three days, we can plan for August and figure it out. These numbers represent some amazing things that were accomplished in nine weeks that we had no idea we were going to have to accomplish. We served 68,000 meals to kids at home. Um, we had students that needed speech therapy that they regularly got at school. Over 175 students continued receiving speech therapy, not just the basic education from their teacher. We continued serving those students with special needs, the, with the specialized services they needed. We had over 1,900 virtual meetings and classrooms that took place in nine weeks. And really, that's more like seven weeks because we really pared down instruction those last two weeks to get all of our stuff back. 1,900. Um, over 700 Google Classrooms that were created so they could communicate and hand out information to their students. Bus routes that their primary job, that's all they did was deliver food. 22, can you scroll up just a little bit? Oh, Ms. Grinsley. 2,200 Chromebooks for teachers and students. And let me just tell you, as a tech director, I was real happy and comfortable when 2,200 of those devices were in five buildings. When they went out to 22 different homes, it was a little disconcerting, but they did great. That's how we communicate with our students. That's how we maintain school. And I am so thankful that we had those and we were able to use those so we could continue instruction. Over 70 homes did not have Wi-Fi. We were able to provide that to homes. And that's multiple students usually in a home as well, so they could continue learning. Um, and then, again, we had over 2,600, that's almost one for every student, um, portal accounts where they could log in every day and see their grades. Um, we didn't have the ability to hand out paper progress reports, so we had to rely on all of that. So we just consider what this amazing school system and everybody from the bottom up, they were so committed to making sure things worked. No one ever said once, that won't work. They rolled their sleeves up and just got it done. And those numbers show that. And I have never been more proud of the work we're doing. That I am. So, very proud. So I'm not nervous anymore. That's good to hear. <laughs> so it says that. So we start talking again. <laughs> and the other exciting thing that's new right now is um, we were able to shift some positions around in our middle and high school and create um, a central registrar for our school district. And if you noticed when you drove in here today, you might have seen a little sign that says registrar to the left. So it's right here in the bottom of this building. Um, with Darren Danner's help, uh, well, all of Darren Danner, he created a beautiful office for her. And uh, we have been, all of our kindergarten um, students, we've contacted them, they're making appointments and they're coming in. Um, we're not gonna have to do those day, one day registrations anymore. Students, uh, parents are gonna be able to make appointments as 
that's convenient for them, and they bring all of their paperwork in. And Miss Silva, who we hired, is wonderful and friendly, and I'm so excited that she's going to be the first person that people meet when they come to our school system. Um, we've already registered some new high school students. Um, how we schedule appointments is very convenient, and we are really thrilled about this. We are very happy to get everything standardized, and um, the schools won't have that task of getting all of these records, and we have one person that does that, and we'll make sure they're all correct um, and organized before they get sent to the school. So we are very excited about this. You can stop by and meet her. She's very friendly. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Not, not questions, compliments. I can't think of anything that would win our other over to loving teachers and loving our school system than this program. To me, this is astonishing to, to demonstrate the love and the compassion that teachers have for students. It goes beyond, above and beyond the call of duty by far. So it makes me so proud of our system. And I suspect that we'll have much more outside public interest in the future and support. So I thank y'all very much. All of that's possible from these people that we work with that have just put forth above and beyond is exactly what they have done. Way more than we would have ever thought that they would have done just asking us to help. About the head start. Boyd, um, I watched the news coverage of other systems really struggling and starting from square one and the preparations that you had made certainly set the stage for success. So congratulations and thank you. Thank you. I certainly walked into a good situation and I have some amazing people working with me that make me look really good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Finley. The next item on the agenda is, uh, this is on everybody's mind. The restart of school and the 2021 school calendar. And so this time we're going to ask Assistant Superintendent Sarah Rager to show come to the podium and, and give us some updates on 2021. Ms. Rager? Okay, this is super exciting. Um, it's kind of funny, uh, maybe slightly ironic, that the Georgia DOE released their reopening guidance last year. Um, probably, uh, I think it was the day after teachers went home for uh, summer break. So it's kind of funny. Uh, we just finish a year and then we immediately start talking about next school year. But that's really kind of like how education has gone lately. Um, and so they did release some guidance for school systems to begin considering as we look toward reopening our schools in August. Of course, as Ms. Finley just said, our last time we was certainly not what all of us are very used to when it comes to education. And now, we're still living in uncertain times, and so we've got to begin making plans so that we can reopen our schools for the next school year. So let's talk a little bit about the guidance that we've received so far. We did receive a document that uh, the Department of Public Health and the Georgia Department of Education, in collaboration, uh, designed for schools to consider uh, as they began making their reopening plans. And of course, it is simply that. It is guidance. Um, it's structured so that it is a rubric, which does show uh, three different levels of public health concern on it. And the great thing that I love about the plan is that it's actually giving communities back control of how their schools function. You know, when we went home, we did not make a local decision to go home. That was, became a statewide decision. Our governor closed schools, and every school system across the state closed their doors and our kids went home. And now they're releasing guidance that gives us the belief that we will be able to make these decisions based on our community's health, not just the health of the entire state, which is fabulous. Um, the rubric itself does show differences in um, based, based on the community's health. So the first level, which is low or no spread, is basically like traditional school. Now there are some obvious uh, differences when it comes to prevention and sanitation and things like that, but it would still allow us to welcome our students back to a regular school year. There are changes that we would make, mm -hmm. obviously, but it does at least give us comfort to believe that we would be able to have our kids back in school. Educators have missed their kids. 
we did do a great job with online learning. I would not go back and rewrite any of that, and I would not take any of the kudos away from the people who worked so hard to make that happen. But that's really not why all of us went to school and what we want to do. We believe in the face-to-face -face of educating our kids. That relationship is critically important. The rubric does move to the middle area, which does talk a little bit about a mid, a mild, moderate spread of COVID infection in a um, community. And there are changes that would be required, such as the possibility of having a hybrid model where students may not all attend school every, every day. There are probably a hundred possibilities of the way that we can structure that. The entire purpose of doing a hybrid schedule would be to simply reduce the number of people present so that we would reduce the rate of infection. And we've talked about a multitude of ways that we could handle and accomplish that. We have not reached a firm decision, and listen, that, that, may, that plan may grow and change as we go along anyhow. The final area on the rubric is actually, it would mirror pretty much what happened to us in March, when our schools had to go 100% online learning so that kids could not be there. So we've been working on some plans, and it's time for us to reach out into our community, both employees and also those that live here, parents and guardians particularly, and find out how they feel about our potential plan. And so at this point, we're going to release a, a feedback survey to those two groups of people, faculty and staff, parents and guardians, based on the low to no spread or the mild to moderate spread plans that the school system is working on for August. This will go out in a push email invitation to each of those stakeholder groups so that we're actually only reaching out to those who are directly connected to Fannin County Schools. We all enjoy social media. We understand that social media has its place, but oftentimes the people who visit our social media are not actually the people who are most closely connected to us, the people who would be making the decisions for that community. And so it's extremely important to us that we keep it tight that we actually reach out just to the people who would be directly involved with these decisions and these plans. And so the emails will go out to registered email addresses within Infinite Campus, and it will include both survey types for the low to no spread, what our plans would be, and also the mild to moderate spread, what our plans could potentially be. We're basically asking a lot of questions of both stakeholder groups just to kind of figure out what their feelings are. Remember, when you're surveying people, you're hunting data that's really based on opinion and emotion. It's not always hard data that you're sharing. You want to see how they feel about certain things. So we are asking them, if your child was asked to wear a mask, how would you feel? Does your family believe that this would be a personal choice? If the school system mandated the use of, of masks, how would it make you feel? Questions such as that, because it is important to us to hear from our family. And once we've heard from our families, we will do our very best to be reactive to their, uh, their feedback as we make our final plan. So if you'll take a look at the left, this plan feedback, vetting, and feedback cycle, uh, starting with district leadership, looking at the document I, I spoke of earlier, to then move to principals and SGP members to let them look at the survey. And then the next phase will be getting it out to parents, guardians, and then also to our employees. Now, I haven't had feedback as late as 5 o'clock today, so it is still getting to its final state before we push it out. But that next step, the surveying of parents and guardians, will probably happen either tomorrow or on Monday. So the next steps for us, of course, is to release those surveys, to start getting that feedback, and then for us as a district to come back together and review that feedback and then try to adjust our plans accordingly. So our timeline, of course, is the survey uh, release, which will probably be tomorrow, if not tomorrow, on Monday. Again, I'm still getting feedback from various stakeholders even now. At this point, we've had meetings with, uh, I don't even know how many meetings we've had, <laughs> district leaders, principals, um, SGPs have been involved as well, and then we did have a community group that uh, met by Google Meet on Monday. And that included several people representing the medical community. And even past that, we did speak also to Dr. Zachary Taylor, 
from uh, the health department to also hear from him and get feedback. Uh, Ms. Doss, she was a part of it as well because of course she represents the county and the school district. Uh, trying to look at this from every single lens that we can before we push this information out. So we'll finish up the survey, get it pushed out to our stakeholders, we'll review it, and then we'll refine our plans and hopefully, when I stand before you at the July 9th board meeting, I'll be ready to share our reopening plan for August. Well done. In addition to the medical community and the others that you mentioned, Christy Gribble from the economic perspective. That's correct. Because that's very real, mm -hmm. uh, the effects of this economically, as well as Robert Graham, County County Emergency Management Agency Director. So if you have any questions at this point where we are in our process to help make plans for reopening our schools. Not a question, but a comment. I, when I reviewed the survey, I thought to myself, what a great tool, a great way to engage our stakeholders, in particular, our, our students, parents, and to make them feel a part of our system and to reinforce uh, their, their participation. It's a great tool. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing the results. I look forward to getting results and, and sharing them with you. I got a question. Go ahead. I heard you say something about emailing. Mm -hmm. You got a plan for sending people that don't have an email? We do. We are going to release a blurb on social media, and we can also have a shot point call go out to our families to let them know if they do not have a registered email address that they can call and that we can make the survey available to them. There are still a certain percentage of families that may not have email and not and not uh, regularly check email. So we will release it like on social media, but not the survey itself. We're just gonna put out the information that there is a survey that's being conducted and then we won't hear from them. The window will be two weeks. So if, it's, if we open it tomorrow, we'll run it two weeks from tomorrow. If we open it Monday, it'll be two weeks from then. And basically what we'll do is just assemble all of that information Take a look at it and then try to gauge because um, the community's feedback is definitely a barometer of you know how people are feeling at time and this has been a very polarizing issue and so it should be interesting once we get some of this data back to see how the community feels and like i said we are excited that we're going to be able to go back to local control of education because it really is something that has to do with local control it's our kids and it's our community and so we are really hopeful that we can very soon have our kids back in our schools. Are there any other questions for Ms. Rigdon? Ms. Rensley, if you want to close out our presentation, I'll just point out just for reference for those that may be watching or, or here in the audience, uh, within the assembly agenda item, within number eight, so we'll go back to assembly. Is the recovery plan is also available. This is the document that uh, Mrs. Regan was referring to, which the board has seen this document. I just want to make sure that the public is aware of it as well. It's inside of Assembly. It's available on the Department of Education website. And it's sort of the three categories that Ms. Regan talks about. There they are, right there. So just clarify. Any other questions? Or... Will there be any value if just, say, a portion of the students wear a face mask? and some refuse. There, there is that possibility. We have had discussions about uh, face masks and if it's a student's preference or a family's preference honoring that. Um, we did speak to Dr. Zachary Taylor about the issue of face masks and he did not actually endorse face masks in a K-12 setting, uh, primarily because kids fidget with it and the more they fidget with it, they're putting germs on the mask and then they're putting the mask back up to their face. And so he did not really he did not really think that it would be an effective tool uh, for, to, to do universal masking of children, but we would certainly honor that. In our plans, we are planning um, every every student will be screened, even at the lowest level, if we have low spread, we still are planning to do thermometer screenings as kids come on campus. Our students who ride school buses, we can't scan them and hold up traffic on highways. That's not possible. And so students who do uh, take our buses into school, they will be asked to wear a mask to be able to take the bus to school. Once they get to school, we've purchased thermometers and there will be staff ready to quickly 
turn it around and get everyone scanned for uh, temperature, which our medical professionals on Monday did say is still an extremely effective tool to be able to screen for whether or not somebody might have COVID, might have COVID-19. And so we do have plans with face masks related to transportation and kids who are on buses because you cannot socially distance on a bus. It's just simply impossible. And so we do have that provision in there. And then within the school day, allowing parents and families, children to make that decision um, and it not be a, an infraction, the dress code or anything like that. But um, the requirement is really kind of up in the air about whether or not that would be something that we would do. Where it was left was uh, there were there were the, the two physicians that were on our committee basically, it's, it's not that they disagreed, but I just don't know that they necessarily found a place to agree. And so uh, Dr. Taylor was gonna go further. I think he said his epidemiologist has contacted the state if I remember correctly. So there's gonna be a conversation with them just to assess the, the value. Are there any other questions? Any questions about the service? Thank yeah. you. Yeah, great job, thank you. Mr. Danner, come on up to the podium and give us an update on facilities. Good evening, board, and thank you, Dr. Block. Before we get started, I was really upset that I didn't win the UGA uh, Achievement Award, but uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe next year. <laughs> uh, just some pictures of what's going on. Uh, you know, I told you a lot of things going on. Go ahead, Brock, and just start. This is the, the basement stairwell at Blue Ridge. Uh, this was uh, in progress. It was a painted concrete floor. Uh, you know, and after periods of time, what concrete looks like, the paint starts chipping. We had it all stripped up and then had a epoxy put down on it. Uh, so again, this should last um, many, many, many years. So again, that was one of the requests there at Blue Ridge uh, that is for the pool. I was a paraprofessional in one of the classrooms uh, in that location, and that's the, that's the best that that floor has ever looked, and I'm excited to see that right there. That's Very good. true, and uh, uh, even Scotty called me today and uh, was talking about some of these pictures. This is the roof at Blue Ridge. Uh, uh, even last year, Dr. Hodges uh, and Miss Bell, Miss Tipton, had asked about the roof. Uh, uh, just keep scrolling through there, uh, Robert, there's one that really shows the uh, the difference in the two roofs. Uh, again, this is just more for what it looked like before. Uh, that one right there. Uh, that's what the roof looked like. And of course, that on the left is uh, after it had been pressure washed. So again, don't know how long it's been since it's been done. Uh, that picture really shows you um, how bad that roof was. So again, that was another one of their wish list. That is not a new roof. That's just a cleaned up new roof. And uh, so again, that's going to help our drainage and everything else there as well. East Bannon, I mentioned this to you last month. Uh, this is the lower T-ball field. Uh, I've got multiple pictures of it. Uh, that was a, you know, as we just first got started, I wish I got a picture before every, any tree was cut. Uh, but again, that's the outdoor classroom that again, y'all have visited. Um, some more pictures there, Robert. Here's the, uh, after it had been, uh, hide receded. Uh, we actually was out there today and that grass has been coming up and uh, you know it, it's almost like the day that they hide receded that's when we went like two weeks without any rain. So again uh, that's uh, that picture is about a week and a half old uh, again and uh, of course the board bidding it's, it's very difficult to get current pictures. Uh, again this is uh, just multiple pictures of that location up there. Uh, Mr. Price and Miss uh, Crump is a uh, very excited about that, how that's going to give them some opportunities to open up their outdoor classrooms and actually that lower field be accessible um, to, stu to students. Uh, West Van Elementary, uh, back here in uh, winter time, we had a major issue with the parking lot freezing uh, because of the new asphalt. You know, the new asphalt is sealed. So again, that water does not drain. So again, uh, notice there to the left, just above the tires, there's nothing there at that sidewalk. So uh, they come up with a plan to, um, to reroute their uh, parent drop off and pick up so they could get more students uh, unloaded at one time. Again, that's normally that crosswalk right there is the students unload at that uh, speed bump there and then they walk across. So uh, uh, 
so the admin out there, along with their, uh, you know, a lot of the people that work out there is the bear pros and everything in the mornings. Mm -hmm. So now you can see that awning that's been extended here. And then, so here's a progress view. Uh, you know, there's a pose going up, and this is over multiple days. Um, I think the next one is the actual final product. Nope, take that back wrong. Uh, yep, that one, uh, uh, again, that is wrapped all the way around to that corner. The, the, the tires is right around that corner to where uh, Mr. Ainsley has the cursor. So again, they're going to unload starting at that corner uh, back where that little blue car is. So they can unload mm -hmm. probably about five or six cars at one time. Uh, all the way up to this speed up back, back here instead of just that one location. So again, it's very similar to what the high school we've done when we changed that unloading multiple vehicles at one time instead of one at a time. Uh, this is one of Mr. Knuckles' wish list. Uh, this is a final product. Uh, that is an extension uh, of their bus uh, unloading area. Uh, typically the bus goes toward now where the end of that awning is uh, so we have two or three buses unloading there. Uh, if it's raining, uh, kids are getting wet. So again, he asked for that extension, so we put that on there uh, for him. That that was over the last couple of weeks. Uh, this is the new, on the left, that's the, the, the new sidewalk. And over the last year, or this past summer, we added some staff parking uh, uh, at the high school. Uh, once we got it there, then they didn't have a place to uh, to get either through the sidewalk, they have to either walk up the road there. So the high school asked, could they have a, a walkway there? Uh, uh, so so staff could get to the, uh, the the covered walkway there in front of the new gym. There at the right, uh, we had to move the flagpole also last year. Uh, so again, now we can uh, you know get to the flagpole, change the uh, you know bring the flags up and down, whatever we need to do there. So again, that was on the high school wish list. Uh, Ms. Finley has mentioned this. This is the bottom on the left side. That's the bottom of the PAC uh, at the chorus area. Uh, and again, that's just a couple of signs we have done. Uh, you know, last, last month I also showed you the buzz in there for the registrar. That's actually to the right. Uh, we've also got salt hole in there. Uh, so again, that, is, that door stays locked at all times. So when, when people come up and hit the button, uh, Ms. Silva can, can let them in. They go to the little lobby, lobby area. There downstairs. Well done, Mr. Tanner. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Tanner? Hearing none, we'll move to the next item, which is actually Mr. Tanner as well. Number 10, construction update, sir. Construction updates. Uh, notice there's no pictures there yet. Uh, hopefully, by mm -hmm. the July board meeting, uh, we will have you some renderings some floor plans of, of both the transportation facility and also the staff development facility. Um, uh, they have shown us some things they didn't want, they could not get the numbers put together yet. They didn't want to try to rush and put something. And uh, we did meet the, uh, the president of Bowen and Watson, uh, Mr. Drew Watson, um, um, uh, incredible guy, uh, Doug, uh, Doug Bro, our architect, uh, he was scheduled to be here that same day. He had a, a family emergency that day, but he sent, did send one of his architects, uh, Henry, uh, who we dealt with uh, on multiple occasions. So again, we had a very productive meeting that day. We met at the property uh, and let them look around and everything. We ended up at the ACT facility. And um, again, I think it's gonna be a great relationship with, with both parties. They have been meeting back and forth uh, on multiple occasions. Uh, I've spoke to uh, Mr. Bro and I've spoke to uh, Mr. Watson on several locations. And, uh, and again, hopefully my next board meeting we'll have some renderings uh, uh, to let you pretty much choose you know, what, what type of facility you want us to build, uh, if we do get to build any facility. So again, and there should be some good estimates along with that. Thank you, sir. Any questions for Mr. Danner? The next item on the agenda, Mr. Danner's public comment. Would you mind checking to see, do we have any public comment this evening? No, sir, there's no one signed yet. Okay, thank you. Hearing none, 
We move to the next item, which is actually yours as well, Mr. Dana. It's to approve the propane. Bids have been out. You had a bid opening on Tuesday. Yes, sir. We so had a bid opening on Tuesday. Uh, Rob wouldn't go back. That's the bid uh, that was sent out. Um, the, the tabulation sheet during the bid opening, we did have uh, six that uh, produced something for us. Appalachian Propane actually uh, wrote us a letter and said they were not going to, you know, this was a no bid. And then just right down the line there, that's how they were received. And uh, so again, that's how they were opened. And that is the prices uh, for each. Uh, so Fort Mountain Propane uh, come in at 0.753 cents a gallon. Uh, that's actually even lower than what we're currently in. That will start September the 14th. That's when our current contract ends. So, uh, so for, for the next year, beginning in September, we'll be paying 0.753 cents per, per gallon for program. Wish I could get that at my house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any questions or, or that will help on that 14% customer? <laughs> yes, sir, a little bit will. This will be iron, this will be ironclad for one year. That's for one year. Yes, sir, that is correct. Okay, then there's, uh, go ahead, sir. Do they make those bids? Uh, do you give them a roughly what you're going to be using for them to give you a bid? Correct. We give them an estimate on how many gallons. That's pretty much the, uh, what everybody's needs to know is how many gallons are we bidding. Right. And uh, so again, we estimate that uh, uh, pretty much every year. If I'm not mistaken, it's like 80,000 gallons. That's what the estimate is. So that's what we put on the, uh, on the bid form. Is that what's on there, Robert? I'm, 80,000 is sticking out in my head for, for some reason. Uh, maybe that's not on there. But typically, that, that's what we tell everybody. You know, hey, we want you to bid on this much. And then that's that's tremendous. There's a wide range, but that's a tremendous price. Well, there this it is. is. I paid a, a, a bunch more than that. <laughs> that's true. All right, so there's Mr. Danner's recommendation memo. Mr. Danner? You can see that price is 0.753, and it is UPG Fort Mountain Propane is your recommendation. Mr. Chair, I make that recommendation for that propane bid. Does the chair have a motion? Motion to approve. Do you have a second? Any, dis any discussion? I'm just thankful that we made the decision several years ago to purchase our own tanks so that we could go through this process because yes, sir, there's good a point. great difference uh, in, in total cost. Yeah, absolutely. That was a very wise move from the board and that's given us the opportunity to do this and bid for multiple vendors. Anybody else? All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. And Mr. Danner, I think that, yes, sir, that takes care of you. Thank you, sir. Item 13 is to approve the district financial report and we'll welcome Finance Director Susan Wynn back up to the podium. Ms. Wynn? Hi. We have our financial report for April the 30th. Um, and we're at 10 months, 83.33% of our fiscal year. Our local revenues are at 100.56% versus 95% last year. Our total revenues are at 92.98% versus 90% for last year. And our total expenditures are at 77.94% versus 80% for last year. That concludes our statement. Board, I certainly think that this is a healthy financial report. I'm thankful that we're in this position and have this type of financial report, especially at this time. I recommend approving the financial report as presented, sir. Do the chair have that motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, the next item, number 14, Ms. Wynn. Folks have been waiting on this. We have our slots that day. We received $428,045.80 for April 2020 which is, it is in the red, but we were shut down for two weeks in March. And if you actually compare it to other years prior, um, the load, we're only $4,080 lower than what we were in April 2018. 
four thousand. Yes, four thousand and eighty dollars uh, lower than we were in two, April two thousand eighteen, and we're higher than what we were in April of seventeen and sixteen at the four hundred twenty eight thousand. So compared to being shut down, even though we're in the red, I think that's a very good collection. I think it's interesting to point out that this month's collection, even though it's in red because it didn't meet expectation, is down just slightly from 2018, and it still exceeds the collection in 2017, which at that time was the highest collection. So, um, this, this is one month behind. This is a collection that we received in May for the month of April. We received in April for the month, month of March. April for the month of March, yes ma'am. And we were shut down the last two weeks of March. Yes. So I'm certainly optimistic that this is an indicator of a quickly recovering economy. Okay, we'll move on. The next item on the agenda is to approve a spending resolution. Ms. Wynn? Yes, uh, this is where we're asking for just the whereas the Fannin County Board of Education for good and brisk and sufficient reasonable is unable to adopt the budget for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020 and ending June 30th, 2021. And whereas it's best served by authorizing the superintendent to expend funds to continue operations, we ask that the um, be, be it resolved that the Fannin County Board of Education that the superintendent is authorized to expend funds for all sources for the month of July 2020 not to exceed 112th of the final amended budget for all funds for each month for the fiscal year June 10 to June 30th, 2020, plus acquisitions of school buses previously approved by the board or textbook acquisitions, educational materials, and, and school supplies as needed to prepare for the beginning of the 2021 school year and any other funds not to be used in July or as previously authorized by the Board of Education. Because of the budget issues in many school districts, they are. Many school districts are not, not familiar with this process of the spending resolution. I will say that the Fannin County Board of Education uh, has for many years utilized a spending resolution because at the end of the day, the accurate the numbers that we receive from the county are more accurate if we can wait and give them time and we can proceed cautiously with 112th of the previous year in the month of July. It allows us to build a better budget and, and have a better idea of our spending. Um, so uh, this is, uh, we're seeing more districts doing this, but again, I feel like this is something that uh, we're quite familiar with here in Fannin to get a better budget. So. Yes, sir, and especially with not having a state budget yet, everybody is really in this position. Okay, Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation to pass the spending resolution as presented. Mr. Chair, I have that motion. I like that motion. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you, Ms. Wynn. Appreciate it. Uh, next up on 16 is to approve the updated code of conduct, and uh, this is done per policy JCDA. It's presented to the board for consideration and approval, and so I'm going to welcome Director of Student Services, Shannon Miller, to the podium. Ms. Miller, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, board members and Dr. Sparky. Um, we made a few minor changes to our student code of conduct. Um, one of those is just the representation of the location now will be online as well as um, in the student handbook. We've added content. We didn't have language um, regarding discipline for our student surge under IDEA in the 504. Um, so we added that. We also updated to be in compliance with the Georgia Code 20-2-742 for the um, stating that any child in pre-K through third grade will not have a culmination of five suspended or expelled days without having some type of intervention to the end of the DSS process. We revised the content for bus misbehavior. We did have that it was um, against the student code of conduct to have cell phones on the bus and for providing Wi-Fi on the buses for our students. And I think it was um, counterintuitive to say that it was um, inappropriate to have their devices. We did leave language um, in there regarding that, that the bus drivers do have control if those devices are misused or are being used in any kind of manner that would cause um, a less safe situation for our children. 
Um, we also added content um, for possession of e-cigarettes and bacon and any related paraphernalia. We did have tobacco products in there, but we did not specifically state anything um, regarding vaping, so that is now in there. And then we removed content um, with the language that stating that it was against our city code of conduct to have cell phones or pagers to be in, to be in compliance with our DUI procedures. And I believe the next item is actually the code of conduct itself. Yes, and that is our code of conduct, um, conduct in its entirety and on the memo as indicated the page where the differences um, or the changes were made for your reference. I will say while Mr. Hensley is scrolling through that Ms. Miller has done a good job following both the changes in practice, uh, the changes in law, uh, as well as you know, policy revisions. And this is a, a, a very nice piece of work to bring everything in line. And you've done a great job cleaning this up to be consistent and compliant. Any questions, comments? I've got a question. Yes, sir. Is it possible for me to get a copy of this? Yes, sir. And part of the revision is that we have, we are, stating that we will keep this revised version online on our website so it is available to anybody that can access our website. You also, if you request it from any school, then they are required to keep it there on site and to hand it to you as well. Yes, sir. Pending board approval, it will be posted. That's correct. So, but currently it's in assembly. But we can absolutely get you a paper copy, anybody that wants one. And that's that's it. So, uh, Mr. Chair, I recommend passing the student code of conduct as presented. Chair, I confer a motion to approve the student conduct. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, thank you. Well done, Ms. Miller. The next item is to approve the 4-H agreement, and this is Assistant Superintendent Robert Hensley, who's going to tell us about the agreement. Mr. Hensley, you want my mic? This is a um, the agreement that we have annually with 4-H and the County Extension Agent. And when Mr. Eddie Ayers retired last year, uh, they still had a need to fill that position, and they were able to fill it with Ms. Ashley Hoppers, but once she got into position, they had to then find someone to go into the role that we help support through this, this program. Uh, and so they did not have someone until up in the year, so they've readjusted uh, the cost of that. It was originally $3,000, and now it's $2,000. And we had paid an original payment of $680. We've made an additional payment of uh, $660, which will then, uh, we have one more payment, but it crosses fiscal years which means that we need to approve this where we can pay it after because it's due on September the 1st of next year. But again, this is the agreement that we have with the county extension agent. Thank you, Mr. Inslee. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Inslee about this document? Hearing none, Mr. Chair, I recommend approving the 4-H agreement as presented. And the chair have that motion. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Cole. All in favor? Okay, thank you. The next item is 18, local board training update. And we'll turn it back over to you, Mr. Hensley. We have uh, completed all of our board training. Uh, one of the things that you guys had asked for was a legal update. We had that scheduled with Matt Cordoza uh, for July, the July board meeting. But unfortunately, they are not able to travel at this time as well. So what we did uh, is we contacted Justin Old and Matt Cordoza, and once legislation is over, uh, then they're going to get with us, and we're going to get you an update that way once they have the time to actually complete the PowerPoint and kind of get the new changes that's going through legislation. But uh, I just wanted you to know that that is uh, the reason why they're not coming in July. Uh, we have submitted, like I said, everything. Uh, GSBA has actually extended the time frame 
till September the 30th for people to apply for the employee board. So we are way above the game. So, uh, you know, we didn't have to worry about trying to get trainings in during COVID-19. So our retreats were very beneficial and helpful in that. So very proud of all the little board training we've had this year. Absolutely very proud of this board and their desire to, to undergo training and improvement. Uh, thank you, Mr. Inslee. So there's no approval needed on this item. So the next item, Mr. Chair, is item number 19, and this is the superintendent's uh, contract. Um, the one person that I may not make a recommendation of any kind uh, is, is me regarding myself, so I defer to the chair. Uh, we need to go into executive session as anybody see. I do, sir. We do. Uh, so uh, at this time, I make a motion that we go into executive session. Second. All in favor? Okay, thank you.
executive session, no action was taken, but I did entertain a motion to come out of the So moved. Second. All in favor? We need to approve our minutes from our last executive session on 4 9 and 20. This time I'll ask for a motion to approve those. Approve the minutes from our last executive session. We need a motion for that. So moved. Second. All in favor? This time, our next agenda item is to uh, review our superintendent's contract, our superintendent's contract. And the board has been pleased with Dr. Glotney's work as our superintendent. And based on the results of his evaluation and performance this year, the board approves an additional year for a three year contract to begin July 1st, 2020. So at this time, I would like to ask for a motion for Dr. Glotney's contract for one more year for, to roll for one more year. You have that motion, sir. Second. All in favor? And I'll turn it back over to you, sir. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you, board. Board, I'll direct you to the personnel sheet dated 6 11 2020 for the next agenda item for personnel. Give you a moment to get there. Okay, resignations. We have a resignation, Holly Davenport, effective date 5-26-2020. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair, accept the resignation. Mr. Chair, have that motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. The next resignation is Emily Newman, effective date 6-5-2020. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair, to accept that resignation. I'll make that motion. You have a second. All in favor? Okay, the next are recommendations for employment in each of these are pending completion of paperwork and background check. Uh, all three of these positions are teachers. I will take them collectively. Carrie Stout, Christopher Farr, Amy Young. Make the recommendation for these three personnel, Mr. Chair. Can the chair have that motion? I move. Second. All in favor? Okay, thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is superintendent's comments. Mr. Hensley, there's a PowerPoint presentation. If I could get you to go to the first slide of that and go ahead and hit F5. Or... There you go. Thank you. Uh, board, ladies and gentlemen, I'm privileged to have had the opportunity to serve the Panda County School System in the community in a variety of ways for so many years. And my time here has been an enjoyable experience. And like everything that is truly important in life, it's the people who make it that way for me. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. We have the finest group of students, parents, faculty and staff, board and leadership team to be found anywhere. And together, we make our district an excellent place for everyone to learn and grow. Proverbs 15.22 says, plans go wrong for lack of advice. Many advisors bring success. On June 1st, the Georgia Department of Education released guidance on how to reopen schools in Georgia. In the spirit of that proverb, the leadership team and I have been seeking wise counsel from many in our community and around the state. You heard that from, from Ms. Rigdon. And I'm thankful and don't take it for granted that we have experts and leaders in our community and among our own ranks who love Fannin County and are willing to help. And I want to just say now and just let everybody know, our goal remains to have school in August. Now, it's impossible to say right now exactly how school will look in August, as so much will depend on the health of our community at that time. To have school will require finding a balance between serving the children's needs and community health. I want everyone to know that we are studying the guidance from the Department of Education. We're planning for various scenarios. We're reaching out to the faculty, staff, and parents for feedback through those surveys that Sarah discussed. It's about finding balance. And finally, I want to end by congratulating the class of 2020. And our district's leadership, faculty and staff, 
community. We all came together to find that balance. And together created an awesome graduation. The podium looked great. And there's our board and, and, and leadership right there. Look at that social distancing in the stands. And we had all of our kids. That's just beautiful. And as a parent and as a superintendent, I want to say thank you to everyone who had a part in making this very unusual school year a great one for our students. Look at this finale. Thank you. Maybe volunteers to be first. You go ahead, brother. I might as well. <laughs> uh, going back to the lights going and blinking, <laughs> when I was sitting on the field and they started blinking, I think everybody thought the light was going out. <laughs> We've never had that in Fannie County. You know, they either burn or they don't burn. We ain't never had nothing like that. They just went off and on. You know, the, the graduation was great. And I was glad to be a part of it. Uh, Ms. Wynn, uh, congratulations to you and your uh, staff for the presentations you got. And I've been here almost 18 years and I can't recall when Fannie County Financial Department had any problems. Can anybody else? No. Dr. Watson? No, sir. You know. Somehow or another, we just come up with the people that make finance click. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, Dr. Watney, they cut me gay. Let me see what the words I want to use is. Uh, a better person the award that you got today than you. I think it was it was meant to be and they gave it to the right person. 68,000 meals. You know, since I've been on the school board, I've always enjoyed the fact that our children, they get breakfast, they get lunch. And I'd like to thank everybody that had a part in those 68,000 meals that was delivered to our children. We all know that a lot of those would have went without food if it hadn't been for that. And that's one thing I like about Fannie County and Fannie County Schools. We take care of our children. Uh, I don't know if you're into softball. I work for the city of Blue Ridge and we're gonna have four or 500 people at the city park this weekend. It's 12U and 14U softball. And I'm ready to go. Thank you. Anyhow, I'm glad to be on the board. and glad to have these other four gentlemen sitting with me and Dr. Gwatney. Uh, I'd give you a 20-year contract if it's up to me. But you're a, you're a credit to our system. Thank you. That's it. Mr. Cole? Well, it's been a good year. I don't care what people say. I, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't know that I've heard the, uh, the voice in Miss Heather that she's uh, given many speeches, but I could really see the emotion uh, in your face and, and 
what is was accomplished and your um, how your heart felt about taking care of all those kids and uh, that's tremendous I, I appreciate that and, uh, you know Miss Rigdon talking about getting back to school and I have an 11 year old that is, <laughs> wants some interaction <laughs> She wants to talk to her friends and see that, so she's excited. I'm glad that we have a path to get there um, because she needs that. I need that. I need interaction with uh, people. That's that's who we are. And um, I'm ready to get rid of that mask and uh, move on. Mr. Danner, uh, thanks for the great improvements uh, that you show us each and every uh, month. It looks really great. I'm excited what you're doing out of West Fannin, being a parent from West Fannin. That drop off is needed and thank you so much. Uh, Miss Wynn, congratulations again from me. And uh, I hate that we're slumming at, at 400,000 in SPLOS money, but uh, I'm grateful for that. Uh, that's exciting. Um, you know, I sit here and I, and I, I I believe that God opened this up for me as an opportunity to come here and to be among these people, these great leaders. Um, I've been to many leadership conferences with uh, Dr. John Maxwell. He said everything rises and falls on leadership, and I believe that. You know, and I'm I'm grateful for the visionary that we have that's constantly implementing where we're going, what we're doing, what we want to do, what we want to accomplish. Because he always teaches the law of the lid. He talks about these fleas and you put a lid on and they only go, you can take the lid off and they just stay there. And I'm glad we don't have a lid, you know? I, I'm glad that we're able to move and see growth and have excitement. And although we, we don't have the other Sarah with us tonight to rev us up. Uh, that's exciting. And because we're living in some tough times and I wanna uh, ask that you remember the law enforcement, the National Guard that are out there having it rough. They got it rough. And uh, as a Marine, I feel for them. You know, I, I, um, uh, that's tough. They're, 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 they're in a curious situation. And so if you believe in prayer, say a prayer for them. And uh, again, I'm just thankful to be a part of this. Uh, I'm excited for our kids. I believe this is a year that they will always remember. It's not a bad thing. They're going to remember it. And, and what this community did for them, what this school system did for them. And so I'm grateful to be a part of it. And that's, that's all I have. Mr. Lewis, I did a lot of studying, trying to kind of decipher out the value of teachers. I never have accomplished that task. Every time I study it, I, I get a new appreciation, a new love and compassion for people that help and, and give children a better life. But, uh, I have to admit, you, you folks astound me. It's amazing the perseverance and stamina, the strength, the love, the compassion that you have for our children. Our, our county is special and our county is blessed. And I am so, as Mike said, I'm so thankful to be a part of this. I feel like I'm the least one. But truly, y'all bless our children and you do it over and over and on and on, day in, day out. Uh, I've always said y'all are so busy, you don't know who you are. You don't stop and appreciate who you are. Because I, I really believe that there's a special place for y'all when you walk through the pearly gates. I believe there'll be a, a different, a specialness about y'all when you do it. So all I can say is thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for your cause. Thank you for living a life like you do to, to bless children. And that goes from a bus driver that cares to a lunchroom worker, 
school board attorney, whatever your position, and you love children and bless them, I hope the good Lord takes a special liking to you and rewards you greatly. Thank you for what you do. First of all, I'd like to congratulate Ms. Wynn and Dr. Glockney on their awards tonight. They're well deserved and thank you both for representing us so well. I'd also like to thank the leadership team and all the, well, the, the whole system. The way that you have risen to the occasion, the unprecedented times that we faced at the end of the school year, the way you've adapted and the way you've dealt with a very difficult situation is remarkable. My hat's off to each and every one of you. You're so willing and so capable. Um, it's a joy and an honor to be a part of the team. Thank you so much for that opportunity. One of my mentors is quoted as saying, um, true happiness can be found in service to others. And my goodness, what a standard you have set. So thanks again for your support. It looks like I may be able to, to continue in this role for another period of time. And, and again, it's a great honor to do so. Thank you. Let me say, <clears throat> you don't know what for all that you do and for I congratulate you on your award that you've got you, Mr. Wynn. Congratulations. I definitely want to not put anybody ahead of anything or, or, not, or in front of another one, but Ms. Riggin, for all the work that you're doing on the survey, I know that it is a overwhelming amount of information that you're fixing to get. And I appreciate you, you being the one doing it. I've got total confidence. It makes me feel better knowing that you're the one taking care of it. So. I appreciate that. Mr. Danner, all that you're doing for the schools, all your maintenance team, please be sure to tell them that I appreciate it. I notice it. It doesn't go unnoticed. But I appreciate all the fair staff and them doing it. Um, your whole team, Dr. Glenn, I don't know how to even, I mean, it's been said over and over and over how y'all, this has been a great school year. I know it's ended a little different, but I do agree with Mr. Bill that it'll go down as a great school year. They'll all remember it. Um, but what will stick out to me is how each and every one of you in the system stepped up and made it this great school year, made it possible. And when we look back, I think it's been said we're going to be that bright light shining in the state of Georgia. Some other systems probably won't be as bright, but we will be. I feel like we're going to be shining real bright, and I'm, 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 I'm real honored to be a part of it. I love being on this board with these guys, these great guys. It's, it's a joy and a pleasure. And most of all, I enjoy being part of this system. It is extremely rewarding. Um, with that, I am. Um, but thank you for everyone that keeps showing up, too. Maybe next meeting we'll get to have in our normal place. I'm hoping, hoping the governor will lighten up a little bit and we can meet like we're used to. So with that, I say thank you. And motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor.